the principle of cryptography between strangers. It is a principle that has been applied in many spectacular cases of innovation. It's sometimes called regressive targeting, which means that if you cannot do something, redefine your goal in more modest terms and try first for the more limited goal or target of the innovation and then look further if cryptographers would have stuck to the original goal of ensuring the two strangers will verify each other identity and will ensure private conversation they probably would have been uh, sitting around the drawing tables until this very day but people like Ralph Merkel have reduced the target of what they tried to do. They understood that the challenge of verifying identity of who you talk to over insecure channels over the internet is a really formidable challenge. So let's put it aside and let's focus first on continuity, meaning two people will start a conversation over the internet and all that they will try to ensure that the conversation continues between those two people and not that a stranger suddenly took the role of one of them and pretends to be the first one that started the conversation. Continuity. That the conversation continues between the two people that started the conversation. This is a much, much reduced goal compared to the concept of verifying who you talk to and ensuring that you talk in privacy over insecure channel with that person. So the principle that we use today for cryptography between strangers is the principle of ensuring continuity. And the first solution to this came from uh, uh, Ralph Merkel, who used the concept of asymmetry between Alice and Bob, the two parties that uh, uh, connect over the internet, two strangers that connect and maintain continuity. Based on this asymmetry, he allowed Alice to prepare a lot of computational tasks, present all those options to Bob. Bob randomly picked one of those computational tasks, resolved it, communicated the solution back to Alice. 
Alice, who before resolved all the computational tasks, based on what Bob communicated to her, she knew which of the many tasks that she presented to him, he chose randomly, without him telling her that I chose task number 316. He didn't have to. He gave the result of 316, and she would know that this is task 316. Why? Because she pre-calculated all those tasks. And Bob selected one randomly. She was ready with whatever task he selected. Any hacker that is privy to all the communication between Alice and Bob and is aware of the entire list of tasks, what he is not aware of is which of the tasks that Alice presented, Bob decided to compute. The only way for him to know which task it was for the hacker is to start computing all those tasks and eventually he will compute the task that will give the result that Bob communicated back to Alice and by then he will know which task it was. Now the time lag between the moment that Alice, who pre-calculated those tasks, knows which is the task that Bob selected, and the time that the hacker, who has to calculate on average half the tasks before he stumbles on the one that uh, Bob selected randomly. This time leg gives Alice and Bob a short-lived shared secret. The, the number, so to speak, of the task that Bob selected randomly. He communicated the identity of this task to her by communicating the result of the task. And now they have a shared secret. Once they have a shared secret for, for a short period of time, they can maneuver it to be a durable secret. And continue the conversation. Again, it ensures continuity. It doesn't tell Alice who in the world Bob is, and doesn't tell Bob what's the identity of Alice. All it does, it creates a shared secret that amounts to a continuity of conversation between two people. Authentication, verification of identity is a separate issue. If we were not wise enough, we cryptographers, if we were not wise enough to separate authentication from continuity, we would be scratching our head until this very day and all the wonders of uh, e-commerce would have been uh, prevented from us. So that's the fundamental principle and the Ralph Merkel solution, which is the, which is the precursor for the uh, more uh, convenient solutions that we use today to enable two strangers to talk in privacy and carry out transactions on the internet.